Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Steadfast love endures forever. Yes, we are grateful to be here in worship today. We are glad that you are joining us, whether you're here in the pews or whether you're worshiping online in the sanctuary of your homes. There are several things I want to make sure you're aware of. First of all, my name is Pastor John, and we are welcome here to worship. We are grateful that Pastor Sung Jae has been away and been able to connect and more fully do his ordination paperwork as he's getting that working up. Uh, we are continuing to give thanks to God that he'll be back this week and for next week he'll be preaching at our 9 o'clock service and offering Holy Communion. So we're grateful as part of his ordination process. That's one of the things that's happening. For uh, the October 30th, I want to make sure you realize that we have this trunk or treat that's happening. Uh, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. We are certainly going to still give out candy. So if you are able to help provide some of that candy, we're going to be needing some of that. So please bring that to the church. On uh, that day, we're going to be gathering up in here in this. Uh, we're going to gather all the folks that are coming for, um, what am I trying to say? Right behind us in this little circle right by the church offices. Uh, what, do, what do you call that little circle? Yeah, that thing you just said. <laughs> the circle of the church. So we're going to be gathering there. We're going to be having all kinds of church activities and options for kids and families to get involved. Uh, and then we are going to gather some folks and progressively move people into the, uh, into the parking lot. And so we're going to be gathering into the picnic pavilion, talking to the kids, talking to the families, praying together. And then they're going to be opening and going into the, the lower parking lot and get the trunk or treat stuff. We're also so thankful for Vinton police officers who will be cooking hot dogs and giving away those hot dogs as well as some chips and drinks. And so we are thankful to offer those opportunities. Kairos also is going to be happening on November uh, 4th is when cookies are needed. So as you well know, those cookie distri those tubs are all over the church. So please make sure to contribute to some of those. We are so thankful for the lives that are changed as those men uh, that are going to be on a men's walk, a men's opportunity that's uh, taking place that second week of November. So November 4 is a deadline for that. The last thing I have for you is we have been going through this sermon series on finances. So these past three, two weeks, and today is week three, that we've been going through a G, three reasons Jesus needs your money. So today we are encouraging you, if you will look at your Connect card, you will see his Connect card looks like it's normal. On the back of that Connect card is a little bit different. There is the pledge opportunity for you to sort of share what you desire, what you are prayerfully discerning to share with the church in 2023. So if you are prepared to do that, we will accept those. You can put those in the offering plate today. If you are not prepared today, we encourage you to continue to pray and bring those back to the church at some point so we can continue to make sure to uh, build this thing called community in the ways that God is desiring us to make that happen. All right, all that being said, let's go to God in the word of prayer. Shall we pray? Holy God, thank you for bringing us here into this place. We praise you for this house of worship. We praise you for this community. Help us to talk more about community, what that looks like, and how we live into it more fully, more faithfully today. Come, Holy Spirit, be among us today. For it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand for our opening song.
is going to come up here to read scripture for us this morning. We are so, so grateful as part of our children's Sabbath. We are grateful for the leadership of kids here this morning. Come on up, Jalen. Oh, we come upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done. Thoughts of apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their, per their possessions and goods to distribute the proceeds to all who had needed. Day by day, they spent much time together in the temple and broke bread at home and ate food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number of hoods that were being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jalen, for making that happen. This is a powerful text from Acts chapter 2 that Jalen has read for us. And it is talking about the importance of community and how community is formed and how it is shaped and the difference that it's making. It's both joyful, but it's also very difficult. The difficulty comes as we look at this text and realize these people who are giving things away so that no one had need is what we are hearing. It is a very difficult thing for us to wrestle with, trying to figure out how people were doing that, why people were doing that. They were doing it for an incredible reason. And it begins really in Acts chapter 2 at the beginning of this text. So I want to give a little context to this to help us understand toward the end of Acts chapter 2, which is what we are looking at. So if you recall, what takes place at Acts chapter 2 is something called Pentecost. Anybody remember that? What takes place at Pentecost? The Holy Spirit comes and pours out on all the believers that were there in Jerusalem. There were 120 that were gathered together in Jerusalem, and the Holy Spirit comes and is poured out on all of them. And incredible things take place as people begin to speak in languages that they were not familiar with previously. And all of a sudden, what they are hearing, all these people that were gathering together, they were hearing their own mother tongue being spoken. And they were able to hear God's mighty deeds of power. Incredible things were taking place. Peter then stood up and preached a powerful sermon to the point where Scripture tells us how many people, does anybody recall, how many people then joined the church of that day? About 3,000. You guys know your Scripture. About 3,000, we are told. So they go from about 120 to about 3,120. That sounds like some great numerical growth, doesn't it? Incredible. They go from 120, quote-unquote, large or a smaller church to really a mega church in one day. In the midst of that, that is where we are at this passage. That is where the place where they were, and now they're co we're coming to the part where we had just talked about what Jalen was speaking about. <clears throat> But there's one part that we haven't talked about yet, and it's verse 42. So we intentionally began in verse 43 that talks about all came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. But the reason this community was existing was because of the Holy Spirit. The reason this community was being able to be sustained was certainly by the Holy Spirit, but by other things too in verse 42 helps us understand that. And so I want to look back and read verse 42 for you. It says this, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Four things that are laid out that are saying, this is how we're doing community and being community with one another. And then out of that, these incredible things begin to take place. That people start sharing things that people start selling items that they no longer want and are need or they feel called to get rid of so that others can have, so that nobody in this community of 3,000 plus is going to be in need. It's incredible. And yet it's also very difficult. Because we maybe are finding ourselves in that same kind of position to say, well, am I supposed to sell my stuff? Am I supposed to give away my things so that other people can have? And the answer, my hope, is going to be yes and no. The answer is going to be, you need to be talking to God. And that's really what we need to be struggling with today to try and figure out how much of this are we going to live into today. What does it look like to be in community today? 
If the Lord is calling you to sell things so that others can have, I am hoping you're going to do it. But that's what we're really asking today. As we are asking you, how much money is the Lord calling you to share with the church next year? And if you're going to share money with the church, that means you can't spend money somewhere else. And so you have to figure out how your spending habits may change or may differ because of this offering you're going to be giving today. Or in the coming weeks, if you're not quite ready to do it today. So my hope is is that we're going to be wrestling with what that looks like. What this thing called community is all about. So if you recall, for the last two weeks, we've been talking about this sermon series, Three Reasons Jesus Needs Your Money. The first week, we talked about how Jesus needs your money to save you from yourself. Because quite often, money can get a hold on us and becomes our master. And it begins to tell us all the things we need to do. Jesus, instead, is supposed to be our master, and money is supposed to be our servant. It is an excellent servant, but a horrible, horrible master. Last week, we, get into, we got into Luke chapter 19, and we talked about this wonderful story of Zacchaeus, if you recall. And how the second reason we need, Jesus needs your money is to save others. And this wonderful man, who was really despised by so many because he was a chief tax collector. But when Jesus shows up into his house, he begins to recognize and be convicted. To say, I need to change Money is no longer my master, it is you, Jesus, who are. So I'm giving away half of my possessions, and then I'm making sure that if I've cheated anybody, I'm giving them paying back four times. And we talked about the incredible community that must have been starting to be built as he goes to knock on doors to tell them, here's the money I cheated you out of. Not just that money, but 400 times more. 400% more four times more. And now we're here in this text, looking at Acts chapter 2, recognizing Jesus needs your money. Reason number three, to build community. To make sure that we come together as a body of Christ to recognize how much we need each other, how much we need God, and how we desire to bring others into that fold as well into this community of faith that we desperately need to live into that. Now I want to share with you, there's been some wonderful experiences that have already happened, and I believe one of the ways it happens on a regular basis with church or at funerals. There is wonderful community that happens at funerals. And one just happened yesterday. Ruth Sage was 97 years old, and we were here celebrating her life and mourning her death yesterday. But those four things that were lifted up in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, if you recall those four things, all four of those took place yesterday as we were celebrating Ruth's life and mourning her death. One of those were the apostles' teachings. So we got together and we preached. There was God's word that was preached and talked about, scripture that was read. Another thing was fellowship. There was definitely fellowship with other people prior to that service that happened. The third thing is breaking of the bread. I am grateful for all the ladies who made breaking of the bread happen right down there in our gym, the George Wesley Jones Hall. What a joy it was to invite anybody who desired to come and be there. And there were certainly prayers that were happening here and there and out of the graveside. All four of those elements were taking place yesterday at a funeral. I'm glad to know that there are other places of the church where those four things happen. One of those things would be like our Wednesday night dinners. I am grateful for all the people who make that happen. I'm grateful for the people that come and receive those dinners as it's driving through. So there is certainly semi-breaking of the bread even though they're not able to do it together, per se. There is a fellowship that takes place, certainly, of all those who are gathering together, and those that line of people that come to receive this food. It is a joy for me 
to be able to have conversations with plenty of those people who come through to receive this food. There is definitely a beautiful fellowship that takes place. And I guarantee you there's prayer as well. All those things are happening. Do you know this past Wednesday, you know what, what, what they gave out, what we gave out? What was the food? What was the main dish? Anybody remember? Barbecue. I'm sad to say I didn't get any. But I'm glad to know that we gave it all away. I kept waiting. I was like, well, maybe I'll get some of this barbecue with this sandwich. I'm heard, I've heard it's delicious, and I like that stuff. I am glad to know all of it was given away. Over 300, and I believe it was over 300, but I think it was 315. Chip is verifying that for me. 315 meals that were given away to people on Wednesday. It made a difference to a lot of people, to a lot of families. I'm so thankful. Now, how can we embody that more fully? Not just through those things, but through all the things that we do here at church. There's something that's going to happen here on October 30th called Trunk or Treat. Anybody like candy? Anybody too ashamed to admit they like candy? I'm a huge fan of candy, for sure. One of the things with Trunk or Treat, and it's easy to do at church, is just having a candy grab. Now, when I say candy grab, what does that mean? You just come through and get candy, that's it. I'm not a big fan of a candy grab. And so what we are trying to do is develop all four of those things that we talked about on October 30th. We're really curious to see how it's going to pan out. Because <laughs> there's all kinds of logistics. We're like, how is this going to work? But we're willing to experiment to see if we can live into this more community aspect for Trunk or Treat. So we're inviting all these families and children to come into that circle to do crafts and do different community-oriented things, to fellowship, to come into that picnic pavilion, to hear a little bit about God's Word, those apostles' teachings, to pray together. Then they can go get their candy. And then the Vinton police will be here and there will be hot dogs that will be provided, another kind of food, breaking of the bread. What all will be happening there? My hope is all four of those things. And I want to review those four things with you again. We begin with our apostles' teaching. What else is there? Fellowship, breaking of the bread, and prayer. Those four elements that those apostles were doing in the first century. And because of those things, and because of the Holy Spirit who had been poured out upon them, we too get to live into that same reality. But what do we do with it? My hope is we share it. We say, let me tell you. Let me tell you about the things that God is doing. Let me tell you about the ways that God is working. Let me share this with you. It can be candy for sure, and I'm glad candy will be there, because I plan on eating some. But we're going to share other things as well. And Jesus is the most important piece. He said, let me share with you about Jesus, who loves you so desperately, who loves me so desperately, who saved us, who went to the cross and died for our sins. That's a story I want to make sure you're aware of. And we're glad you can be here to hear that. And we are striving to embody that. So here, take this. Have this. Take this. Because Jesus loves us and we want to love you as well. Now it's hard to do that. It is hard to do that. And so there is all kinds of quotes that my hope is that help us understand the value of this reality. And one of those quotes that I want to share with you, with you is from a book that I talked about last week, A Spirituality of Fundraising by Henry Nouwen. And so there are two different pages in here that I want to share with you that talks about the importance of this thing that we are doing, trying to create and embody community, Christ's community. He says this on page 24. Even a seemingly small act of generosity can grow into something far beyond what we could ever ask or imagine. The creation of a community of love in this world and beyond this world 
Because, whatever, where, because wherever love grows, it is stronger than death. So when we give ourselves to planting and nurturing love here on earth, our efforts will reach out beyond our own chronological existence. Indeed, if we raise funds for the creation of a community of love, we are, we are helping God build the kingdom. We are doing exactly what we are supposed to do as Christians. Paul is clear about this. Make love your aim. That is the difference that money can make in our lives and in our community. He goes on to say this on page 49. How does spiritual communion manifest itself concretely? When fundraising as ministry calls us together in communion with God and with one another, it must hold out the real possibility of friendship and community. People have such a need for friendship and for community that fundraising has to be community building. I wonder how many churches and charitable organizations realize that community is one of the greatest gifts they have to offer. That community is one of the greatest gifts they have to offer. If we ask for money, it means that we offer a new fellowship, a new brotherhood, a new sisterhood, a new way of belonging. We have something to offer. Friendship, prayer, peace, love, fidelity, affection, ministry with those in need. And these things are so valuable that people are willing to make their resources available to sustain them. Fundraising must always aim to create new, lasting relationships. So he's talking about the money that we give when it is used to build Christ's community, it is incredible what happens. And that is what we desire to do here, more fully, more faithfully. Yes, I believe there are some wonderful things that we have done and continue to do, but we can do better. And my hope is that we will remember those four elements. Those four elements that we talked about from Acts chapter 2. And one of our commentaries called Feasting on the Word, there's an author that helped explain a little bit more about these four elements of apostles' teaching and fellowship, breaking of the bread and prayer. Gary Neal Hansen is the one I want to quote for you today. And he talks about, there is one, the first quote in this text, he says this, though scripture does not make it standard, and that standard practice is basically us sharing all of our goods or selling all our possessions so that others can need or others in, that aren't in need. It's saying that is not a standard practice. However, if you feel called to go and shell, sell your stuff so that others can have that you that do not, you better do it. If you feel called to make that happen. So it says, though scripture does not make it standard, this picture of sacrificial giving for communal needs is appealing. It is a challenge to Christians in an affluent society, especially one where personal autonomy and acquisition of wealth or ideals. He then goes on to share about those four other elements, and one of the ones I want to make sure to share with you is about fellowship. He says this, A mark of authenticity and vitality in a congregation is the quality of people's relationships and their efforts to include others in those relationships. There are churches that view themselves as friendly and welcoming, but within which a visitor will not be drawn into conversation where even members can suffer silently, unknown and unloved. Devotion to fellowship means nurturing the habits of hospitality, and it takes work. What does it take? It takes work. It's hard. It takes courage to notice a newcomer, helping him or her to, to find the coat rack or the, or the classroom. It takes initiative to invite someone to lunch or a cup of coffee after worship. Those early Christians did enjoy breaking bread in their homes. It takes, creating, it takes creativity to start a regular gathering where a small group can begin to know and to care for each other. With devotion to fellowship, people are made to feel at home, growing close enough for genuine rejoicing, encouragement, and support. You see, I believe most of you have felt that. Most of you have experienced that reality. Otherwise, you wouldn't be coming back to this place week after week after week. The beauty is we get to share it with others. It's not just for us to keep. It's not just for us to hold on to. Fellowship is for us to share. 
to bring others into our mix so that they too can experience this beautiful thing called community. Christ's community. Wow, it is awesome. One of the things I am hoping that we can live into more fully here at Thrasher Church happens on Wednesday nights. And it's that Wednesday night meal. As people are driving, are driving through, there are time after time I've heard, are you going to open up in, to come inside again? Are you going to do that? I said, we're hoping to. Not yet. Why do you think we're just hoping to and not yet? Why do we not just go ahead and open it up so people can come inside and eat and they can also come through the drive through Why do we not do that? Say again. We don't want to make people sick. That's one of the reasons for sure. What's another reason? No helpers. We don't have enough people who desire to do this work to come in and help serve. It takes work. For all those folks that gather there every Wednesday night, it takes work. For if we are letting other folks come inside the church, guess what it takes? Work. Actually, more work. Because from my understanding, what happens in the past is you get out the real dishes. You get out the real cups. You get out the real silverware. And so guess what has to be done with those? You got to wash it. You got to clean up. So it's not just about serving and making sure those meals get out to folks, but it's making sure all that gets cleaned up. But it's also about fellowship. It's also about the apostles' teaching. It's also about breaking bread. And it's also about prayer. Do you know if we did those things all in that space, we could do that again a little bit more fully. But it takes intentionality. It takes effort. It takes work. It takes us saying, is this something we desire to do? Lord, are you leading us in that direction to embody community a little more fully? There are other ways that we can do it as well. And it takes us to try and prayerfully discern and figure that out together. And the more we're able to do it, the more community is able to shine through. Not simply community just so we can be together. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Christ's community. When we embody Jesus with ourselves. When we can make sure that people recognize and see Jesus through us. When we can hear and share Christ's word through this thing called the Bible. When we can fellowship with one another and actually have conversations with others and be genuine about it. I actually want to get to know you. When I ask, how are you doing, I don't want just some pat answer to say, fine. Eh, I'm okay. I actually care about how you're doing, and if you're not doing well, I want to hear about it. And if you're doing well, I want to celebrate with you. And if you need help, I want to walk alongside of you. And if I can provide any of that help, wow, maybe I can do that. When we embody all four of those elements, there are incredible, miraculous things that take place. I don't know about you, but I like to see that. I like to see it more regularly. Of course, there are miracles that happen every day in our lives if we just open our eyes to them. But my hope is that we can embody this thing called community more fully in this place called Thrasher. So not only the people that are connected to this church, but the people that are connected to this community, the people that are connected to the Roanoke area, the people that are connected to Virginia Conference, the people that are connected to the world are able to recognize, wow, that, those are the folks in Vinton. Those are the folks that Thrasher, that care about Jesus, that are trying to embody community more fully. Yeah, that's us. Not so we can simply be proud of our accomplishments. So we can be proud of Jesus and what he is doing in 
and through us. Miraculous things. Jesus certainly needs your money. Save you from yourself, save others, and build community. Are we willing to do it? Are we willing to do it together? My hope is the answer is yes, today and every day. Amen and amen. Please stand as you're able, as we affirm our faith found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Amen. There is no doubt that only God can build the church. And my hope is that we continue to realize that. We take this time now for prayers, joys, and concerns. I want to make sure to share with you in your Connect card, there is a space for uh, adding joys and concerns if you want to be added to our prayer list. We have a very long prayer list. We are so grateful to have all those folks we want to continue to lift up. There is just several out of those that I want to make sure to highlight today. Uh, We are so thankful again for our children's Sabbath. It was a joy to have our kids uh, and our preschoolers at our 9 o'clock worship. It was a joy to be able to have uh, Cameron and Jalen here that we're going to be uh, serving along with some other kids who are helping with ushering. Uh, we are so grateful for those opportunities to make sure to help them lead today. We are grateful for our Wednesday night dinners and the ways that we are embodying uh, this reality of being church and being community. And certainly worship here on Sunday mornings is a huge part of that as well. And my hope is that we realize other ways that we can make sure to be, do that more fully. We want to continue to lift up challenges that people are enduring for concerns. We want to continue to pray for the family of Ruth Sage, uh, her family as they grieve her loss. It was a joy again to be able to celebrate her life, 97 years old. We continue to pray for Hurricane Ian cleanup. There is a lot of devastation still in Florida and other Georgia and South Carolina, so continue to pray for those complications. Again, if you feel so led to help with the United Methodist Committee on Relief, you can give a check here to the church or other ways, and we will make sure it gets to UMCOR. We want to continue to remember uh, Edwina Dickerson. She is battling bladder cancer. It was a joy to be able to see her this past week, but know that it has gone gone through some complicated times for sure for that family, so continue to pray for her. We also want to pray. I I had uh, talked to Beth Abbott earlier today. She's one of our persons for humble praise. She let me know about some family members of hers uh, have twin boys who are 26 weeks old, and they need a lot of prayer. Uh, So please continue to lift up that family of the challenges they are enduring at this point. All that being said, let's go to God in a word with a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Holy God, what a joy it is to hear your voice today, to know the incredible things that we are striving to do, much like was happening in the first century as you poured out your presence among all those believers and the church grew numerically, but in so many other ways, spiritually, for people to see, for people to experience the reality of a community that cared and loved them. Oh, Jesus, we, in, we desire to embody that reality more fully and more faithfully here at Thrasher. Help us to make that happen. Help us to use the money in which you have given us to share with others. Help us to use our talents. Help us to use our time, all those things more wisely so that people can see you through us. Oh Jesus, that is truly your community. Holy God, we are so grateful for the ways we've been able to celebrate Children's Sabbath today the joy of seeing so many little ones, so many families here in our time of space and our time of worship. We give you praise for the ways, oh God, that we are desiring to continue to do that in different ways, whether it's Wednesday night dinners, whether it's the trunk or treat. Help us to lift up the things that we want to do, oh God, to make sure to incorporate your teaching, the apostles' teaching, the wonderful words that are here before us. Help us take advantage of those things. We give you praise for the opportunity to break bread together give you praise for the ways that we can pray. I give you praise, oh God, for the difference that those items make in those fellowship. When we're able to incorporate those four elements, oh God, our lives are different and changed, and we will desire to bring others into that mix. We love you, Jesus. We're so grateful for the ways that we can demonstrate that today in worship. We know that there are many other ways that you are desiring us to do that. And so help us. Open our eyes to those ways, O God, and help us to say yes. Empower us to say yes, because we know it's hard work. And sometimes that hard work will help us to step out into ways that we are not comfortable with. And yet with your help, O God, we can say yes and make it happen. With the help of this community, we can surround each other and make it happen. Oh Jesus, thank you for this sermon series that has opened our eyes and hearts a little bit more fully to money and the importance of utilizing it, not as a master. It cannot tell us which direction we need to go and how we need to live our lives. 
Instead, help us to use money as a servant. Your servant, O Jesus, because you are our master. We need that. We need that priority straight so that we can be saved from ourselves, so we can save others, and so we can build community. Thank you for that opportunity. O Jesus, continue to be with all the people on our prayer list those ones that have been named aloud, but there's so many others in the situations around our world that are desperate. Oh God, our world is in a lot of turmoil. Our nation is in a lot of turmoil. Maybe even our families and communities are in a lot of turmoil. But you, oh God, can work and are working in incredible ways to bring about your healing, to bring about wholeness, to bring about restoration. And that, that, oh Jesus, is your community we desire to be a part of that. Oh God, help us as we continue to be mindful of prayer. Not just the significance of taking time to be in prayer, but to listen and to act out of the prayers in which we are seeking. The voice that we are ready and willing to hear your voice that tells us go and do. And so out of that prayer, oh God, that prayer that you've taught your disciples to pray, we are supposed to be living those words out. And so it is that prayer, O oh God, we bring to you once again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for our hymn. They'll know we are Christians. to come down forward as we continue to share God's gifts and offerings with us this morning. If you are prepared to give those pledge offerings, please put those in the offering plate. Keep fighting voices 
What a huge joy as we recognize community being built right in our very midst. My hope is that we can see that more fully in all the things that we've got going on, all the things that we are desiring to do to give back to the Lord, and recognize to be, bring others into that fold as well in this incredible place called Thrasher Church. Amen and amen.
Please stand as you're able for our closing hymn. <laughs> joy and peace in believing, so you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.